Right, it is the Asian TV Awards this coming week. I can tell you exclusively who wins it. Yeah, straight out of Riverside. We'll make you my niggas ride and fly. Women collide when we slide through on the side. Like glue, all true, always bossing the floss side. Slaw side, keep bully with the fries. Uh, eye to eye, it's like spy first spy. But black on both sides, most deaf, old tribe. No color lines, no sucker MCs, no supper time. I bust the nine, I catch a bust this rhyme, bust the mine. It's right, it's Wednesday, it's time for the Andy Q&A. No, it's not, time for Q&A. Look, so many people have written in. Thank you so much. So much. I can't get to every single one of the, the points that you've, you've raised, but I'll certainly get into a few. But there is one that is stand out. Ferdows Arteta, real name. Rajin and said, where is Jamie Yo now? <laughs> oh, Munesh replied and said, oh yeah, she's on gold 90.5. <laughs> Got me thinking, right? That if the Asian TV Awards are next week, the best sports presenter is one of the categories. The Asian TV Awards is held in high esteem. The best sports presenter has never been won by. Conte is gonna be far more combustible. Never been won by all the teams I played for it wasn't as if I liked everyone in my team never been won by I must confess at the start I'm not very good at this but has been won by one of my tapas is that there's so many different small portions you can have like I don't know Right, so let's go through each of the nominations for the best sports presenter commentator for 2016. All of the odds I'm putting against these people are highly fictional. So here are your nominations for this year's sports presenter of the year. The original boss boy, Sentinella Sentinel. I grew up with that ritual cross boy. My gold chain swing since six, pinky ring since five. Red and blue bandanas at nine. That was a little blue in junior high. Throwing up gang signs that warm blood. I've actually been nominated this year. <laughs> I consider them all my my friends in fact so much so one of them I'd say is my best friend right so it's a bit weird that we're all I don't know it's just weird it's funny it's funny plus why are there only five nominations now all of this sounds a lot more glamorous than it actually is so what happens is your company puts in your nomination to the Asian TV Awards you then present them with a clip of what work you've done and then I think there's a few judges some of whom I think I know it's not revealed who the judges are they go through and then they whittle it down to five or six so I've made it into the final five but what I want to do now is come up with your top five betting in reverse order as to who will win this year's sports presenter of the year all right also before I do that let's just explain the Lagardere AFF Suzuki Cup situation a bit more I think it maybe was a bit unclear as to why I got chucked out so off the back of match day one, which looked a little something like this. Am I in the right place, boss? Is there a football game today? Baby, let's get down. I then went to them and said, look, this is the type of footage I'm using. Like, I went to them and said, can we discuss what is possible, what isn't possible? And because I'm in this sort of gray area, I particularly care about the football matches. I, I mean, I don't care. What I care for is the whole experience and the behind the scenes. And, and I kind of, I don't film the match. I kind of just film the periphery. So Lagardere came to meet me, but the representative that they sent to me had no idea who I was, right? Or no, I mean, that's, a, I mean, that's cool, but no idea who I was or what I was doing and just ran through what photographers are supposed to do. So I was asking, can I film myself being a photographer? And the, the dude was unsure. I then requested, as I always do, and you've seen me do this, I then requested whether I could film Lagardere explaining to me what rights I've got to film within the stadium while the matches are taking place. I was refused that, which is fair enough, it's cool, it's cool. So then I turned the camera on myself, hoping to get, um, in my mind, because I'm, I'm always thinking of what the story is, right? In my mind, I'm thinking I just want to get my reaction. I was going to take out the audio, but I just wanted my reaction to being told. So when I turned it on myself, the media officer said, look, I don't appreciate you doing what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're making a mockery of all of this. I'm throwing you out of the stadium. So I'm still waiting for an official letter from Lagardere, or at least the media personnel, because I owe that to my my boss I owe that to red card TV because there's an awful amount of expense that's gone into getting me here staying here and it's my job right <laughs> Right, on to this year's award. Your fifth favourite coming in at number five is... I'm spending more time with him than my girlfriend at the moment. Richard Lenton for 11 Sports Network. Going for the tripeat, or is it a tripeat? He's been nominated for his Singapore versus Japan World Cup home qualifier pre-show. 
Must have been some pre-show. Anyway, Richard knows the game inside and out, loves the game, has got a passion for it. Very thorough, very dedicated, very slick as well. And I think a tree peat is out of the question for me. Richard Lenton's odds are fourth favorite to win. <laughs> like, these are my friends. Look guys, if you want to do the same thing, you could get your own chat. Oh, I don't like doing this. From Fox Sports, Paula Malay Ali. Uh, this was for her 2016 Australian Grand Prix qualifying. Must have been some pre-show that. Paula has got the best sports presenting voice, I think, in the world. Sounds amazing, very slick, very funny, very informed, does a lot of preparation for her work, works diligently, works hard. But just for a qualifying? Third favorite to win. Uh, this, was, this is for my sports dog. I just think that perhaps what I'm doing is a little bit too From Fox Sports. Fox Sports? From Fox Sports, Jason Della Pena. It signals the end of an illustrious career that took a bit of a nosedive. And this is for his day one in the 2016 Australian Open. Now, what I admire about Jason doing what he does for, for the tennis is that it's a whole day affair. You're sat there, it's very fluid, you've got to think on your feet, you're reacting very quickly to what's just happened. There's rain delays, but the guy is so smooth when he does it. That's his real forte. <laughs> but in at number one, you're Absolute rock solid cert of a favorite to win this year's Sports Presenter of the Year. It's gonna be deep. The first person that I ever presented. How have you been? I've been really good. Well, if you, I've had a really quiet summer, like, kicked back, didn't do much. What have, you, what have you done? Well, it's not true. I read your blog because you went to Southampton, you brought Toby yeah. with you, you had a great time there. Yeah. You went to Dublin, didn't you? Yeah. You had lots to do. Yeah, and you're pregnant. And I'm pregnant. She held my hand throughout. This is for her work on Fox Sports Central, which is good, although I'm surprised she's not nominated for her golf stuff because that's when she's really good, right? Reading Nauta Q is one thing, but being on site. Colette Wong for me is a dollar thirty-three. <laughs> No one deserves this more than Colette. She works so hard. Obviously, I've worked with her. I see how hard she works, how many questions she asks. She gets it right every single time. And when you stick her without the auto cue, and when you stick her on site, just talking naturally to the camera, she is so slick. So for me, your favorite, the nailed on winner for this year. Get your house on it, put your mortgage on it. It's Colette Wong to win the Sports Presenter of the Year. But they're all my friends, right? So it's a bit weird. Right, I get the feeling that I've just rambled on too much. What I'll do is I'll save some of the Q&Andies that you put in this week and maybe include them coming up. Um, I'm gonna stay in Manila for the net until Sunday. I'm gonna go, don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the Josie Rizal Stadium. Who's playing at the Josie Rizal Stadium? Hang on, Suzuki Cup. Suzuki Cup fixtures. Uh. Oh, awesome. So I'm going to go to the Singapore-Indonesia match on Friday, which is not at the main stadium where I'm not allowed, but at the Jose Rizal Memorial Stadium. And I'm going to go as a fan. So I try and capture some sort of thing for you. I'll let you know if Lag is there right back with a reason why I'm not allowed to do what I do because I mean some federations pay me to go and do that sort of thing you know that's what I don't get I think most some of most of the problem was I saw all the Singapore team all the the Fox presenters who I all know so naturally I just go wandering over and say hey how's it going and I think from an outsider's point of view that just looks like maybe I'm taking the piss a little bit. I know the players, I know, I just know everyone. I've just gone, gone and say hi, so maybe that didn't go down too well, I don't know. Right, that's it for the Q and Andy. Um, tomorrow's one is quite cool. I go Arnis training, which is Philippines national sport. <laughs>